Hello everyone, it's Francis with String Into A Thing. Thank you so much for joining me for this new tutorial. I'm so excited to be here with you. I created a cute little crop top that's great for spring or even just slightly a warmer time of winter. And really honestly, you could just throw a nice denim jacket over it or dress it up or dress it down or even just wear it just to kind of, you know, make a huge statement that is just so unbelievably rainbow and colorful and perfect for pride. So thank you everyone so much for being here with me. So I did end up experimenting on my own. I still am very new at crochet and I just used some simple double crochets, half double crochets, and then stitched it up on the sides, a front and back panel. And then I just went along and created some edging, which is super duper simple. And I'll show you every single stitch of the way. So here's the one I made as my prototype, I recommend that we use a three medium weight yarn here with this four medium weight for the body panel piece here. So all these as threes, but I wanted to try something different and this is the way mine turned out right here. So we have slightly different colors here again. Everything's from Hobby Lobby as I'll mention in a moment. But before you jump in, I wanna let you know that following this technique but using a smaller yarn, you'll probably get a better edging style. Mine got a little wavy because it's a little bit more bulky. So I did a four here and a four everywhere. But if you stick with the edgings as threes, you should be amazing. Okay, so I just wanted to chime in and say that we are gonna make an absolutely gorgeous shirt. So this is a size small and it does stretch and it feels great. I love it. I couldn't believe how easy it was and I actually experimented with my own favorite top out of my closet and ended up just basically tracing it. So this is what I ended up doing. I got out my favorite top and I know this one fits me well, right? So why not model it? So I ended up creating a chain where I thought was in a balanced area. Once I got to the underarms, I decreased for a little bit, stayed the same, and then increased again. And then really honestly, we do this together and it's just gonna turn out, you could really do this with absolutely any shirt and just kind of use your favorite shirts as like a little stencil, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. If you want the same exact experience as me, these are the yarns I'm going to be using. I actually think we will only need maybe one and a half of these. So this is, I love this yarn from Hobby Lobby. And honestly, you can copy the size hook on the back. It can tell you right here. Um, this is a medium four weight yarn. And the hook size is a 5.5 millimeter. If you want it a little bit looser, you can go up a hook size, or if you want it a little tighter, you can go down a hook size. For me, I'm just gonna use a five point millimeter and just keep it nice and simple. <laughs> so we might need one and a half or so skeins of this rainbow fun stuff. <laughs> I also have a nice pair of scissors here. And then I have these choice colors. You may have this in your stash already. These are slightly more muted than these ones. I wanted to kind of try something else, but honestly, you can use whatever kind of yarn you want for this project. I'm keeping it at a medium weight. So these are all 100% cotton again from Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn. This one is 326 Curry. That's the color. It is a little more muted than I wanted, but I wanna see how to, you know, how this one turns out. So this is Again, another four medium weight yarn right here. And I've got the same type in the color 70 turquoise. And another one, again, same type, 60 red is this one. And also number 100, bright citrus. So those are the colors I chose. You can really honestly keep it the same colors. You can even use totally different yarn for your base body piece and then come in with, you know, similar matching pieces. So again, this is completely customizable. This is your artwork. You do it your way. And we also, of course, need a tapestry needle. So awesome. Okay, once we've got everything figured out, we can go ahead and jump into the project. I'm so unbelievably excited. I love this quality yarn, and it's just so much fun. Let's do it. <laughs> so I'm gonna start out with this body piece on the first panel, which is just the front main portion of this top. And I'm going to make a quick slip knot, and I have a beginner series, and I'll leave it right up here for you if you wanted to go a little bit more in depth and a little bit slower. So I've got the tail facing me and I'm gonna kind of scoop it up as if I'm scooping up someone's hair there. <laughs> I'm gonna wrap it around my two fingers and then the working yarn, which is coming from the skein. I'm just gonna tuck it over inside that hole and then we'll have like a little loop here. I'm gonna hold both of these strings and tighten just a little bit. And I'm gonna stick my hook in that little hole. <laughs> and I'm gonna pull to bring it to the base of the hook. So now that we're in this position, I am so excited. I'm gonna start out with a chain of 38. So I'm gonna go wrap the yarn around the hook and pull in. Again, I'm keeping my fingers nice and loose, 
just allowing that yarn to fall through. I noticed in crochet, the less you fight your yarn, the better you are. <laughs> so that's one right there. And again, yarning over, twisting my little guy, and that's a two. Again, three, four, five, six, seven. I love the way the color's already changing right here. Absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> And again, this is completely customizable. You can just mock your piece of your favorite apparel out of your closet and do a chain of however long you think that it will be. And when it just stretches just a little bit, once we get those half double crochets in there, it'll be just a little bit wider. So you could pre-stretch your yarn and kind of see how long and how many chains. Completely up to you. <laughs> and every time I get to a higher point, 33, 34, 35, 36 where I'm kind of farther away. I just release my middle finger and my thumb and I go back to the base right up here to help me a little bit. 37, 38, and that's as long as the bottom of the top is going to be. And we're going to work from this way up. So now we're going to begin our first row, our official row of half double crochets. Now that's so super easy. All we're going to do is I've got my little guy's head facing me, right? I'm going to stick this on top of the yarn and I'm going to yarn over first and I'm going to stay right here. Now I'm going to go into the second chain from the hook. So it's not this loop or this chain, but it's the next one right here. So I'm going to go while I'm wrapped around, I'm going to go inside there and then I'm going to pull through one and then I'm going to have three little hoops on my hook right here. Then I'm going to yarn over again and pull through all three loops. And that's a half double crochet right there. How awesome are you? <laughs> so now this big opening is where we just worked into. I'm going to go to the next one. Again, I'm going to yarn over and insert into the next following chain. Pull through one loop, three loops on hook. Yarn over again, pull through all three. You can do this. So I'm going to yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through all three. And occasionally you're going to have to get your yarn a uh, little skein here and unravel. Unravel them a couple times. <laughs> and then I'm going to continue way down until I get to the very end of this really pretty rainbow string. <laughs> so again, that big opening is the one we worked in. I'm going to yarn over, insert into the following chain. Yarn over, pull through one. Yarn over, pull through all three. Simple. And the more you do it, the better you get. So be easy on yourself. You'll catch on if it's your first time. <laughs> so I've worked myself down the row here on our first row, and I've got just a couple more chains to do. Here's the second to the last one. And that final one you'll see right at the end there, this guy. I'm going to go right in there. Now after I do this, I'm going to chain one. After I just complete that, just one chain. Then I'm going to turn my work just like this. Okay, I'm going to do that again. <laughs> just like that. Now I'm ready to start building my half double crochets on top of my half double crochets. So as you'll notice, this is what it looks like. Now if we twist this towards the top, you'll see these two little legs. We're actually going to stick our hook underneath both of those every single time we do a stitch. So again, we need to yarn over before we begin that half double crochet. And then we're going to stick our hook right underneath both of those little loops there. And then I'm going to get that yarn and pull through once and then yarn over, pull through all three. So this gets a little easier. That foundation chain is probably the trickiest part. <laughs> and then you just yarn over and you continue. Right under that little V. Yarn over. Insert. Yarn over. Pull through all three. And we're going to make it down the row all the way again. <laughs> Easy, you got this. The more you practice, the more you'll easily identify where it is that you're going. Okay, we're going right in here. 
and your eyes will start to catch on. Yarning over, inserting, yarning over. Pull through all three. You are doing phenomenal. <laughs> so I'm approaching the end of my row two, and you'll notice there's just a few more stitches there that we need to go through. One, two, three. So here I go. <laughs> I know you are doing awesome. Wow. Okay, last little guy right there. Sometimes he might be really on the side, so just manipulate your piece and get it under those last two. Perfect. I'm going to chain one again to turn, and we're going to do our row three the same as the row one and two. So let's begin our row three together again. You'll notice that the first stitch is really close right here. That's where you're going to find it. So I'm going to yarn over and then go right under those two little legs again. <laughs> right there. Right next to that chain one that we just made before we turned around. You're going inside these little sections here, if you're looking at it flat. And then if you look at it from the top, you're going underneath those two. Perfect. I'm going to make my way all the way down the row. I'm about to end my row three right here. I've just got three more stitches to go into. So I'm going to yarn over and insert. Pull through one, pull through all three. Just one more time right here on that last, last one. And from here, instead of chaining just one, I go ahead and yarn over, pull through all three. Instead of just chaining one, this time, to begin our double crochet row, I'm going to chain two, just to kind of match the height of a double crochet there. So there you have it. I'm going to give it a twist, and then we're going to begin our double crochets. So we're going to actually insert our first double crochet right inside here. Again, the same place we've been inserting. <laughs> so for the double crochet, it's super easy. We're going to yarn over just like we did before, and insert, and pull through one. But this time, I'm going to yarn over and pull only through two loops instead of all three. And then I'm going to yarn over again, and pull through two. So let's do that again. <laughs> So to begin our double crochet, I'm going to yarn over and insert to our little leggy guys right there. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. And that's your double crochet. Excellent. I'm going to repeat that all the way down the row. And that's what they look like. Cute. So I'm about to conclude my fourth row, which contains double crochets. So I've got three more stitches to do. I hope you're having as much fun as me. There's the last guy right there. And that is fantastic. We are going to begin our row five. Again, let's chain two right after that. Turn our work and go straight into this stitch right here, right next to it, and begin another row of double crochet. <laughs> So I'm about to complete my fifth row right here. I have one more stitch, and then I'm going to do another double crochet row. And after I complete that one, again, I'm going to chain two, and turn my work, and go straight into this first stitch right there, right inside here, and repeat all the way down again. <laughs> I'm about to complete my sixth row right here. Two more double crochets. And then right here we're going to go back to the half doubles. So I'm just going to chain one at the end of row six and turn my work and go straight away into this first stitch again right there. 
but I got a yarn over first, insert, pull through, three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through all three, and that's my first half double crochet in my seventh row. <laughs> Perfect, you were doing so unbelievably fantastic. I'm gonna work all the way to the end. Again, this is just so great. So you probably noticed the pattern now, we're doing three rows of half double crochets and then three rows of double crochet and changing each time. So I've just finished my seventh row of half double crochets and I'm gonna chain one again and do two more rows of half double crochets again. So here we are on row eight. <laughs> How awesome. We are seriously making some progress. And at the end of row eight, I'm going to chain one and turn again and begin row nine again with half double crochets. And at the end of row nine, I'm going to chain two to begin our double crochet. But at that row 10, we're going to do our first decrease. So we can start tapering in and get that unique turning in style. <laughs> so I'm right here at the end of my ninth row. And again, I have one last half double crochet stitch to do. And then after this one, I'm actually going to chain two and then we're going to do our first decrease. So I'm going to turn my work like this. So let's just start as if we're going to do a regular double crochet. So I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to insert into this first stitch right here. And then I'm going to pull through. And then I'm actually going to yarn over and pull through only two loops right now. From there, I'm going to jump over to the next stitch. I'm going to yarn over again and insert and pull up a loop. Now I have four loops on the hook. I'm going to yarn over, pull through two. Now you have three. And I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three. So essentially we just took these two and made one stitch at the top for this guy. So that's going to start creating that slight angle as we build on top of one another. Now I'm going to continue to go all the way down with my double crochet and then in the last two we're going to join those stitches together again and I'll meet back with you when I get there. <laughs> so just regular double crochet stitches the rest of the way until we get to the end. Okay so I'm on my very last three so I'm going to do this third to the last normal and those very last two right there we are going to decrease again. Super easy. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then you have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through only two, and then now you have two loops, and then I'm going to yarn over again and insert into the last stitch, and pull through there, and we have four loops on the hook now. And we're just going to complete yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through three. And again, we just made a decreased stitch. So we joined these two to be just one stitch. <laughs> and I'm going to do that again, actually, right now, after we chain two. So I'm going to chain up two and turn my work. And so now, how many double crochet rows did I do? And honestly, you can interchange these however you want. You do not need to do three of each uh, repeatedly. But I am, again, on another double crochet row. So that's awesome. I'm going to go ahead and again do the same thing. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through only two, yarn over, and go into the next stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through three. And just did another decrease right there. You see that angle coming out? So this is straight and this is coming in. And that's what this shirt starts to do, right on this underarm area. Perfect. I'm going to continue doing my regular double crochets from this point and then when I get to the last two I'm going to repeat what I just showed you before we turned our work. And then also keeping in mind which stitch I'm using for each row. So again you can interchange these however you want. You could do all half doubles. You could do all double crochets <laughs> and you could do any kind of stitch you want using this technique. Really absolutely anything is possible here. And that's just the beauty of this type of craft where we can really experiment and do anything that fits in our hearts and in our eyes and our minds. I love it. It's so great to be here. Just crocheting with you. I'm having way too much fun. <laughs> I can't wait to see your finished shirts. Totally post them in the Facebook group. I'll leave the link down there below. 
as well as all the other little details for this top. So we're essentially going to do a total of four decreasing rows. So we just completed our left and right, and then again, we're gonna go to the end of this row and decrease again, and that'll leave us two more rows of decreases. Here I am again on my last two little stitches there. I'm gonna yarn over, insert in the next stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert into next stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through three. How easy is that? We just decreased our second row. Okay, <laughs> that is completing the 11th row. So again, now I am on another chain two right here, starting row 12, turning my work and joining these two stitches the same way that we did before. Yarning over, insert, pull through, and yarn over, pull through two. Two loops on hook, yarn over, insert, next stitch. Pull through, four loops on hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through three. We just made another decrease there, and I'm gonna go down row 12 with regular double crochets now until I reach the end. <laughs> Again, I'm at the end of row 12 and I have two more stitches right here. It's kind of hard to see because they're purple. <laughs> there they are. It's not this one, but it's these two. Now again, yarning over, insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And then we're going to yarn over again and go in that next stitch and then pull through four loops on a hook, yarn over two, yarn over three. And there we are. So now I'm actually going to begin a chain one, turning my work. And because I completed three rows already of my double crochets, now I'm going to turn this back into the half doubles. Okay, so we can combine these two next stitches together here and here. And I'm going to start my half double crochet just like normal by yarning over and inserting into the next stitch. I'm going to pull through and then in the same position with three loops on the hook, I'm going to go straight away into the next stitch. And then I'm going to yarn over again. Four loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through all four. Now, of course, there's several different ways that you can alter any crazy decrease, increase, or anything is totally customizable in crochet. <laughs> Remember, this is art. You make it the way you like, and if you make up a stitch, good for you. I don't believe in any wrong sides or right sides. I just believe in a side that looks good to your heart and your eyes. And if you like the way it feels, fits, and it makes you happy, that's what it's about. So I'm just teaching you what I know. <laughs> so after we do that, I'm just going to go all the way straight down again with regular half doubles all the way down the row, and then we're going to decrease at the last two stitches again. This is our 13th row, and I've got two more stitches left right here. <laughs> and again, we're going to join this half double crochet, yarn over, insert into the next stitch, and pull through. Straight from here, go inside the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through all four. And there we are. I'm actually going to chain one now. And for this next row, which is our 14th row, so we completed our four rows of tapering in and decreasing just like that. We're going to start going up for three rows to kind of even out, and then we'll start to increase. So let's begin our 14th row by turning our work. And again, we are going to do half double crochets or whichever one you decide. I chained one for half double. So I'm gonna yarn over and I'm just gonna crochet like normal. So half double crochet there and all the way across. Three rows of this. No increases or decreases, just regular. Just like we have been doing. <laughs> you are doing awesome. So I'm at the end of my 14th row here and just some regular half double crochets. And I'm gonna chain one again. I have one more half double crochet row to go. And then here we are on row 15. <laughs> Insert and complete that 15th row. So now I'm gonna do one more row straight one on top of another. But this time at the end of 15th row, I'm gonna go chain two and I am going to turn my work and double crochet straight across. Now the chain two is just to imitate the height of the stitch. <laughs> so 
so it can kind of be right there with it. Now I'm finishing off my last 16th row right here of my last double crochets. And I'm noticing a bump here, and that is kind of a tight cluster. If you notice that in your project and, you're, and you lay it out and you say, okay, wait a minute. <laughs> this looks nice and straight, right? Angle, it's supposed to straighten out. And if that you have a little bump there, then you know you need to go into that one. I'm going to go right inside there. Double crochet, and boom. So we've got some straight ones here. And we did a total of three straighter rows. So that's perfect. Now we're going to begin an increase. So I'm still on my double crochets. So I have two more double crochet rows to go. So I'm going to chain two for this increase. And turn my work for row 17. And an increase is much more simple, I think, than a decrease. All we do is put two stitches in the same stitch. So I'm going to go straight away right after that chain two. I'm going to go into the first stitch with my double crochet. And then in that same opening, I'm going to do another double crochet and then work across the row as if nothing happened. <laughs> and I'm going to move along on row 17. <laughs> You can already see the curvature here. Now, if you don't want that dramatic of a curve like I did, it almost looks medieval in a sense, um, you can alter it and start straightening it off here and customize it to your liking. But I'm just going to kind of mock the one that I already have as an example. It's a really nice fit and it's so cute. It almost feels sort of like a vest, but it has a sweatery feel to it. I love it. I absolutely love it. <laughs> I love how the front and back body panels of this project are one piece, so it comes together nice and quick and there's a lot less stitching up to do. <laughs> so I'm right here, leaving that last stitch undone. As you can see, he's right there. We are going to need to add two double crochets inside that stitch, and then that'll be the increase for our row 17. And that's beautiful. Absolutely fantastic. He's starting to curve this way. I'm going to chain up two again for another row of double crochet. And I'm going to turn my work. And in that first stitch again, two double crochet. You're getting the hang of this now. You're, you're understanding how this works. Wow. You can go off and do any project it is that you want and try to mimic this with your increases and decreases experimentation and match up your clothing, your favorite clothing out of your closet and see what you can crochet a similar shape as. How fun is that? Oh my gosh. I am at the end of my 18th row and I have two more stitches here. Last one. I'm going to work two double crochets in here in the same stitch. You'll really start to see that dramatic curving now. Oh my goodness, I love it. Absolutely cute. Okay, so now, <laughs> so we're going to do a total of six increasing rows. So I just completed my second increase row, and now I'm going to begin my 19th row, which is going to be a half double crochet. So I'm just going to chain one, turn my work, and increase. And very simply, again, right into the first stitch, just do a regular half double inside here and add an extra one in the same opening and we just increased right there. Row 19, half double crochet all the way down. So I'm right here at the end of my 19th row, which is the third increase row. Yarning over into the last stitch. I'm gonna insert two half double crochets right there, chaining one to begin the next 20th row with another half double crochet increase. So this is our fourth increase row. I'm going to yarn over into the first stitch, half double crochet, two of them in the same space, one, two, and then all the way down again. <laughs> I'm right here finishing up my half double crochet row of increases. Again, if it's bunched up and it looks sort of silly, you know you need to go into one more stitch. So I'm going to put two half doubles right inside here, 
and that completes row 20. That is the fourth row of increases. I'm going to chain one, turn my work, and again, work two half double crochets into the first stitch. And I'm going to continue. <laughs> right here at the end of my row 21 and I'm going to insert into this last stitch right here and increase again two half double crochets in the same spot and this time I'm going to chain two and that completes our fifth increase row so this is our last increase which is going to be double crochets so I'm going to turn my work and insert two double crochets into the first stitch right there and work all the way down and in the last stitch I'm going to put two as well Right here at the end of my 22nd row, I'm doing double crochets here and I'm going to add just one more increase in the very last stitch of this 22nd row. And that is beautiful. As you can start to see, we have this little hourglass sort of shape happening. <laughs> so from here, I'm going to chain two and begin row 23. And I'm gonna turn my work and I'm gonna crochet normal now. So no increases or decreases. But the trick about this one is that I'm only going to put in 11 stitches. So I'm going to count 10 or 11, however you think looks nice. This is going to start to become over the shoulder part. So there's one, two, three, 10, and then 11. Now from here, I am actually going to decrease because I want to kind of taper in this cute little shoulder piece. So we're not gonna continue across since we're creating a little scoop. <laughs> so after I finish my 11th stitch right there, double crochet, I'm gonna chain two and I'm gonna turn my work and I'm actually going to double crochet two together again. So we're gonna do a little decrease right here. I'm gonna yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and I'm gonna yarn over insert into the second stitch and yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through all three. Do a little decrease right there and I'm going to go regular straight all the way across. Beautiful. And that looks absolutely fantastic. So now that we're here, I'm going to go and begin a half double. So I'm going to chain one and turn my work and then I'm going to go down half double crochet until I get to the last two stitches right there. Right into the first stitch normal, all the way normal, all the way down until I get to the last two. Now I've got two more stitches left and I'm <laughs> right here. I'm going to insert, pull through, insert, pull through, Yarn over, pull through all four, and just decrease right there on a half double crochet. Beautiful, I'm gonna chain one there and I'm gonna take a look at my work here, and that is looking really super cute. It's kind of angling in like this. We are going to snip and just do the rest of this little shoulder over here. That is so awesome. I'm gonna snip it off and pull through, and that's a bingo. <laughs> okay, so now I need to go the same amount of number of stitches in and then do our little scenario. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my yarn again, and we're gonna focus right here. So I'm gonna insert where I feel comfy and find a stitch right there, and I'm gonna go in there. I'm gonna get my yarn, my working yarn, <laughs> and pull it through. And there's several ways to attach this. You just attach it the way that you like most. I'm gonna leave a good little tail out here and make a cute little double knot. <laughs> Nothing super special. Right in the same hole there, I'm gonna pull up a loop and I'm gonna chain two and we're gonna mirror the other side. So after I chain two, I need to turn and that counts as one stitch right there. We're gonna do a total of 12. So there's our first one and we need two as an increase in that first stitch. So here's one and then in the same stitch, two. Now that's a total of one, two, three. I'm gonna count all the way to 12 as I go down normal. 10, 11, 
and 12. Perfect. So now I have this mocking the other side. Now I'm going to chain two again. One, two. Turn my work. And I'm going to actually decrease to create this angle. So let's decrease together right here on this other shoulder by yarning over, inserting into this stitch. And yarning over, pull through two. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch. Pull through, pull through two, and then pull through three. And I'm gonna go all the way down here, just like a normal hair. Two more stitches right here, regular double crochets. And then I'm gonna chain one for this last row for this other shoulder piece. And I'm gonna turn my work and go in that first stitch, regular half double crochet. And then we're gonna decrease on these last two. Once you get to them, I'm gonna go yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, insert again straight from that point, pull up a loop, and pull through all four. Chain one. Admire what you just did. I'm gonna snip off a good amount, maybe three inches or so, <laughs> and pull the beautiful little guy out of there, and there you have it. That is so awesome. Everything's coming together beautifully. And we just need to make one more of these pieces so we can stitch them together. <laughs> and there you have it. Oh my goodness. It really only took me about probably 30 minutes to whip up this next one. And I'm so excited to stitch them together with you. And now it's up to you on which side you want to be the outside. You could totally make this decision. So I'm going to flip around, see what I want. I kind of like this. And all we're going to do is actually stitch up here and up here. Super easy. I just do a little whip stitch with my little needle. So I'm going to go ahead and get my needle out and my yarn. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this little guy in the needle hole. <laughs> I kind of like to pinch it a little bit and shove it in and pull it through. Once I get it, I'm going to attach a knot at the end of it. I'm going to get a good length of yarn here, maybe about two feet just in case, <laughs> foot and a half. Snip it, and now we're totally ready. I've got my two pieces totally on top of each other. Again, this is rainbow yarn, so for me and my project, it hid itself pretty well, um, so I don't need to kind of face the public sides inward and then flip inside out after we stitch. I'm just gonna go straight in for it, but you can 100% do that. So I've got my little guys together here, and first things first, I'm gonna find the two similar openings here. You'll notice there's a little knot on here on both of them. So I'm going to get my little needle and go in here for both. I'm going to drag it all the way to the end of the yarn here. So I got a little tail left and then I'm going to tie that on. So of course we've got the neck here that needs to be open, the two arms and the very bottom. <laughs> so really we're just going to go straight up here until we get to that first decrease area. I'm going to leave about three inches or so on this little tail. Make a double knot right there and I'm ready to go. So now that I have that, I'm gonna keep my two pieces together and go in there however I feel comfortable. I'm just gonna start from one side and whip around again to the front and continually go down the line and just get under at least two little loops at the same time for a little bit of structure there. And if it gets caught on something, you just kind of move it around. <laughs> I'm going to tuck the tails inside so they don't bother me there. <laughs> and continue to sandwich them together like that and go under two stitches at a time, wherever you think is good, and go for it. Sometimes I like to tug on my piece a little bit and then continue. Now there's probably, you know, a specific technique on how to do this beautifully. Uh, me, on the other hand, I'm just, I'm just here having fun, okay? I try to find the most similar two pieces, mirror images of each other, and try and go inside and under those two little legs for each side as best I can. <laughs> so I've made it to my decrease area where the armhole is going to be. You can even go between the plies of the yarn, too, if that makes you happy. I'm right here again at the base of the little Afro sideshow there. Hope you don't mind. 
Okay, so I'm right at the base of that first decrease right here, and I'm going to finish off this edging by just going in the loop. Tightening that up, getting my scissors again, about three inches, two and a half inches or so, and that's a bingo. So now we have this. You could totally start to see the top coming together. And now it's time for me to stitch up the top up here with you. So let's do it. I'm going to turn my little piece around here and do the same thing. I'm going to prepare a shorter amount of string right here on my tapestry needle. And then I'm going to get to it. <laughs> so now I'm going to be focusing down right here. I'm going to go ahead and stick my yarn, little needle in here, find the edges. Sometimes I go into the rounded section just to kind of square it off a bit more. Pull that through until it has like a little tail over here, and again, tie it on. <laughs> I'm going to double knot that, and now I'm totally ready. So here I go. One of those two little legs there, and two other little legs. These are actual stitches now, so it's a bit easier to identify where we are instead of working at the edge of a stitch. Or on the side of one. I'm just stacking those stitches together and going through both of them. So always starting from the front and pulling away from myself. So I like to pull kind of at the same level direction and then kind of squish it around a little bit. <laughs> Now I went through my very last stitch and I'm just going to go through the stitch again, more off to the side a little bit, just to try to give it a little extra squareness and even off to the very, very side in these little knot holes right there. And then I'm going to call it good. There's a funny looking little knot here, so I'm going to take care of him. Kind of shove him in here. <laughs> See how you can manipulate things in here? So I'm going to finish this off by creating a little opening for my needle to go through. I'm going to do that twice. Just inserting really anywhere. And tightening. Trimming it off. And that is the shoulder area. That's cute. Oh my goodness. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Now when you venture off and create your own custom size, the great thing about this pattern is it doesn't really matter how many chains you start with, even or odd numbers. It's just you go and make a chain as large as you think it needs to be for you. So that's what I love about this. And also right here for your shoulder pieces, all you would do is you stop at a balance point because as the proportions get larger, you want to compensate and balance it out with larger um, shoulder pieces, right? So you just go until you feel comfy and experiment with how wide you want to be in comparison to how wide the top first chain foundation chain began. And it's totally up to you. We don't need to find a center point or measure or anything. We just count the number of stitches that we went in and just use the same technique of decreasing, increasing, and staying normal. Those are my terminologies that I'm making up, okay? <laughs> Perfect, I just finished both shoulder pieces here. And we have the opening at the bottom. <laughs> You can even wear this and try this on now and see how it fits. <laughs> this is so unbelievably cute. Okay, so now it's time for us to start sticking in all our little tails. Or you can even do this at the end if you want, if you want to just jump straight into the collar and the little arm pieces and the bottom. Or you can leave those out and do your own little custom edging and call it a finished top. <laughs> I'm going to give my little top a flip inside out and see what it looks like on this side. Kind of wiggle my pieces here pinch them a little, manipulate them, and that actually looks really cute. I love it. So I just wanted to take a peek, but I'm going to put it right back this way and get all my little tails weaved in. So very simply, I'm just going to get my little needle again. This is a tedious moment of this craft, but it's definitely worth it once you got everything in there. <laughs> so again, I'm just going to string this little guy through here. So I'm at the bottom of the top right here. And I'm at the bottom of the top. 
when do you get to say that? So I'm just going to start sticking this in here, really anywhere I feel is good. Staying on this layer, since this is the inside of the top, technically. <laughs> and once I have it far enough down, I'm going to pull through and go the opposite direction. I like to kind of straighten my piece out here. And go another direction here. Pull all the way through. Give it a little pull, tug, and a very careful snip. We don't want to cut the yarn that we worked so hard to get to this point. And I'm going to continue using that technique with the other pieces. So technically, this guy's going to go in this direction. This guy's going to go in this direction. And then whichever, you know, position the string is facing, I kind of like to weave it in that direction. <laughs> and I'll go back and forth, kind of like we did the reverse. So I'm just keeping it on this layer inside instead of, you know, making this yarn show up on the front, which would be the public facing side. So I'm just trying to keep it on that first layer of yarn that's facing the inside of the top. And then I go in the opposite direction like this. And finish that one off. And give it a nice snip, carefully. And so I'm going to continue that until all my strings are inside. And when you're going the opposite way, it's also nice to kind of take a different pathway. And even if you go between the plies of yarn, that's also wonderful. So I have woven all my little tails into my piece. And now I'm going to flip it back right side in and kind of prepare myself now to start adding on the edging. So I'm so excited to be at this stage. This is turning out so cute. Again, just like before, I'm gonna stretch it out, kind of squish it around, shape it the way that I want it, and then choose my color out. You could choose all the same color. I just thought it was, uh, you know, fun and a little, little bit of trippiness going on with several different colors off to the sides. So I am going to start out with this neck portion and I'm just gonna get my string and you could decide whether you want to begin at the seam here, so it ends right here, or on the very back. After you choose your front or back, you could decide that. So I'm actually going to start in the back. So I'm gonna find somewhat the center here and bring some string through. I'm choosing green for this one. And tie it on, double knot. So it does matter which side I start on. I can go from the inside here, but the edging towards the inside will look nicer on the interior of the top. So what I'm gonna actually do is turn my piece around and now I'm on the back. And we could have did that before we attached the yarn. You can see I'm slightly off, but I'm not worried about it. I'm gonna insert now and this is facing up. So I'm not working from the inside, I'm working from the outside. Now I'm gonna go in and pull up a loop and I'm gonna chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. And now I'm gonna go down the row here with half double crochets, and we're gonna create like a little ribbed effect, and we'll attach it to the base. So I'm gonna yarn over, and even if you have to turn your piece a little bit to work with it as if it's just a chain, that's perfectly good. I'm going to go into the second chain from the hook again. So it's not this one, but it's the next one. Yarning over, and going right inside there, and half double crochet right there. Now that big hole is the one we just worked in again. I'm gonna go down the line three more times. So the five chains turns into only four half double crochets. And you could really make this piece as long as you want it or as short as you want it or completely leave it out. One more chain right there. Now this can get a little bit tricky, but once we establish our row, it should be okay. So once we have that, now we're gonna attach it to the piece. I'm gonna get my little tail out of the way and you'll see that we have a stitch right next to it. We're gonna slip stitch this and go in that stitch, pull the loop in and then pull it through the loop right there. And we just solidified that guy in there. So now I'm gonna go straight into this next one, pull up loop and slip stitch inside again. 
Now I'm going to turn my work just like this and go into four stitches. Now I can get a little confusing because this guy looks like he's a stitch, but he's actually just a slip stitch. So we're going to work into four. One, two, three, four. But we're going to do a back loop half double crochet. And all that is, is just we're working in to the back loop right here only. Instead of under both, only the back. So I'm going to do that right now. One, two, three, and the fourth. Now I'm going to chain one to turn. I'm flipping it like this is pretty simple. <laughs> and then again, yarning over and going into four. One, as long as we count four, two, three, and four. We should be able to keep track of it pretty good. And again, once we get to this part, here's my top just like this. Here's the neck opening we're working on the outside. I'm going to slip stitch it into the following stitch that's totally empty. Not the one that we're inside of here, but the one that's empty. Slip stitching it right there. Going to the next one and slip stitching again to begin our next round. So I'm going to turn it and repeat. So turn your piece towards you and really look. Here we got one, two, three, four, and this guy's a slip stitch, so it's easy to get confused and add an extra little guy in there. But as long as you count four towards the end, then you should be good. Just that back loop. And when you get to the end of the round, chain one and turn. So that's a nice edging towards the outside. Now if we did that in reverse and working towards the inside, we'll have all this little funky stuff, which I want to keep towards the inside of the top. <laughs> Trial and error, I've, I've learned that after completing quite a few rounds, I ended up having to undo it because I didn't know that little detail. So I wanted to make sure you know that we're working on the outside of the top. Back loop, half double crochet. Four of them right in here. Four is just the number I'm using. And then we attach it in the empty one. He's the next one over. One slip stitch there to solidify and to begin a new one. Slip stitch again and turn. It's when that yarn turns around, that's where the interior is going to be. And it will, of course, continue to make more sense as you practice. You are awesome. <laughs> Look how far we've come already. Chain one, turn, and repeat. I'm going to go all the way around until I meet to the other side. Now you might be thinking, okay, Francis, I just got to the edge here. What do I do when I have this sideways double crochet or whatever it ended up being for you? You just find that little distance and kind of shove this anywhere you feel is appropriate, like the previous slip stitch. I completed my slip stitch into this round right here. So it, is, it was a normal-ish stitch right there. Then the next one over, which is somewhat right about there. Then I'll continue. It looks so cute. I love the ribbed effect. And you could even do half double crochets or single crochets for your ribs. These ones are, you know, a little bit more spaced out, which I think are cute. So here I am again coming down my row. I would just go to the next appropriate looking area and make my own opening there. Slip stitch it. Create another opening right here. Slip stitch. And turn and continue the pattern. <laughs> you are doing excellent. Just excellent. And when you turn your work and you're at the top of the row, going like that and kind of twisting it over so you can see where you are helps. I know that you kind of have to get behind here and really get in your first stitch there in the back loop. But he's there. You'll find him. Sometimes you got to squish your piece around. <laughs> now, this is a skinny part of this. I'm going to go under two strings if I can to kind of make this collar 
just a bit stronger. You may need to kind of get in there and manipulate it. Because I wouldn't want this to be loose. There we go. And remember, if anything's unclear to you, you can always run the video back and see again exactly how a certain stitch technique was achieved. So excited to see your finished shirts. Oh my goodness. Sometimes that base one will get a little bit tight on you. Here we go. So I've made it to right here, which I've got my pieces totally attached in here. And now it's time to join them. There's several different ways that you could do this. You could even just chain one, cut, and then leave a string here and then whip stitch that together if you want to really, really hide it. Or you can be, you know, <laughs> like me. I just kind of want to get this guy on here. So I'm going to stay connected. I did not chain one, but I'm just going to kind of do a slip stitch together. So I'll go into an opening, go into another, and just slip stitch down the row here, connecting them together. Nothing super duper fancy. <laughs> just pinching them together and getting in under those little legs of the yarn and joining them up. Once I've done that, I'm going to take a look at it. And that kind of blends in with the rest of it. So now from here, I'm going to chain one. Get my scissors. Pull the loop through. And then since this is actually the back, I'm going to pull that string through so it's on the inside of the top. And then I'll weave that in in a little bit. So I'm going to continue to use the same technique with other colors for my arm part and for the waistband area. I mean, if you want to call that where your waist is going to be in this tiny little crop top. So how fun is this? Oh my gosh. I love it. Again, we need to be on the very front. So I'm going to get my red and attach it the same way as I did before. I'm going to be right inside here. Get my hook and stick it at the very base of this where the underarm bottom center is right there. Get that string to go through. Attach it on. Pull up a loop. There it is. And now I'm going to chain the same amount as I did here over here. The bottom, I'm going to do a slightly larger chain so I can have a little bit wider of a waistband section. So again, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, and five, and then do my half double crochets. So we just go down the chain regular until we attach this little guy. <laughs> So then we're going to attach him in, making sure I am on this part of the arm. One time I accidentally traveled over the, I was like stitching them together by accident once. <laughs> Get him in there, slip stitch to finish off that round, slip stitch to the next opening, and then turn our work and continue. Same technique. Count four stitches, back loop only. And back loop only. Half double crochets. And chain one when you get to the end. Rotate. Might need to toss your top around here and there. And continue, oh my gosh, beyond excited here. We're, again, you're gonna have to really twist to see that other guy sometimes. You gotta get in there. Beautiful. In the beginning of your arm sequence, you may have to pave your own way, but once you continue, you'll notice some openings that look appropriate for you to go inside of. Just trust yourself on this. It's a handmade item and you gotta be easy on yourself. You're doing great. So I've noticed also my other piece tends to get pretty squished down there. So I gotta move everything out of the way and twist my work towards me so I can really see that very last stitch to go in the back loop. And now you'll see some of these openings here. So since I'm in this one technically, in the blue, I'm gonna jump over to the green, slip stitch that on, and then the next opening is right here. Slip stitch to begin a new round right there. So just play around with it, see what looks good. You can always undo it and restitch it up. 
So I've just made it around and I ended up towards the base body piece on the bottom instead of joining them from the top outside inward. I'm on the inside and I'm just going to join them while I'm out. Again, you could totally chain one and tie off, but I'm just going to slip stitch this together. Sandwiching them up together. Super easy, simple. Anyone can do this. Right there, perfect. I'm going to go ahead and chain one and tighten to secure it. And there's that piece. That is way too adorable. That, ha, huh, my goodness, super cute. Okay, so now I'm gonna actually do the exact same thing on this side. And again, super important to get that nice finished edging right here where the joining of the two yarns come together. In order to do that, we need to really stay towards the outside. So I'm not gonna work from the inside around. I am on the outside of the top. And chaining up five again. Finishing off my round right here for the blue. And that is adorable. Now we can start building down here. So now I'm going to give my piece a turn around here and start on the back again. So I'm going to go towards the middle, string it through, attach it, flip it the other way, pull up a loop, and this is totally customizable. You may need to play around with this. Um, five I'm going to do first, and then I'm going to go six, seven, eight. Maybe eight would be good because by the time we go down, we're going to subtract a chain, so that would be right around that width. So I'm going to take a look at my other one and see what I did. Yep, that seems good. So I'm going to chain up eight and then repeat the process all the way around. This is going to be a lot more simple because we actually have stitches that we can work into. It is a chain, so I'll be here with you on the first round. So into the second chain from the hook again, yarning over, pulling through all three, right here on my last one. Now I'm going to turn it around just so you could see it. I'm going to go into this space right here. Slip stitch to attach it on. Tighten it a little bit and go to the next space, which is right here. Okay, so that moved us over a little bit. Rotating it again and now repeating the steps. So since we had eight chains, now we have seven stitches. So we're going to work into seven little spaces here. Again, making sure I don't confuse that with the chain. <laughs> Or that little slip stitch, I mean. Chain one, turn. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches again in the back loop only, just like we have been doing. And again, find that next opening right about here. Just a nice even distance. Boom. And then I would go over here for the next one. Right about there. Play around with it. You can do this. Seven stitches. Seven, chain one, turn and repeat. Just completed slip stitching right up this way to join those two and I am so excited to finally tuck in my little last tails. We have two each color and oh my gosh the top is looking absolutely adorable. <laughs> this is phenomenal. Okay so same technique as before and I'm actually going to get my hook and bring it towards the interior of the shirt here and then put that guy along the inside of the blue. He can even go in the rainbow stitching here. I'm just going to kind of keep him hidden in between. There, I'm going to go one direction and then kind of tuck it out real quick like that and back down a different direction here. Unbunch it and give it a careful snip. 
And I'm gonna repeat that with each one of my tails until I'm totally completed. <laughs> Perfect, I've got all my tails woven in and I just had an absolute thrill being here with you. Thank you everyone so much for hanging out with me today. It's been my pleasure to be your instructor and now a new crochet friend. I'll see you in my next video. Be sure to join my Facebook group and share your project. I would love to see it. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.